welcome to the White Witch Podcast with me, Carly. Hope you are all well, witches. So this is another one of our White Witch Workshops for Witchtober in the run-up to Samhain. And before we start, I have a bit of a monumental announcement. It's not going to affect you guys, not much, but it's quite exciting for me because I did a good thing. Don't regret the thing I did, but I probably will in about a week. I quit my day job because I am going to be a full-time witch. Yes, I've officially lost my mind. But the moral of the story is I went back to my day job after six months being in lockdown. And suffice to say, I lasted two and a half weeks before I couldn't cope because I couldn't get any of my witchy work done my position was really stressful and not just that, I feel like I just felt this overwhelming sensation that everything that I'd been doing was falling by the wayside and I just couldn't cope. It was just too much. So I handed my notice in, spoke to my boss, explained that I'm leaving to chase my dreams and lost my mind. And here we are. So with this, I'm hoping and you know, I'm going to be working on this full time. I've got other witchy endeavors that I am involved in. So there are workshops that I'm running. There'll be online workshops. I'm also going to be coaching. But enough about me. In a nutshell, I just wanted to say that I have all the time in the world now to be recording podcast episodes and my life is not completely out of balance anymore. So it's a very exciting day for me. But without further ado, because it's not about that, I am here to talk to you today about grounding, earthing and centering because I thought it would be a good idea to talk to you about an area of the craft that I am not the best at but I realise that often the areas of the craft or self-care that we run away from are usually the aspects that we need the most. So I thought I would also run through a bit about my morning ritual with you. I have had a couple of people ask what I do on the daily, but this also ties into some grounding processes. And again, this is one of the areas I always struggle with, but I am working on. So in terms of a daily practice that I regularly carry out so the wheels don't fall off my day, it is pretty simple, but it does make me feel really connected. So I wake up and I try to do this process before I get tempted to brew a fresh coffee. I'm obsessed with coffee. So I light an incense stick. I go on to light a small black spell candle first to ask for what I wish to remove from my life or anything I feel I need protection from. I then go on to light a white spell candle to ask for that I wish to bring in and to say a few words on that which I which I'm grateful for. I don't know why I started that practice. Well, I do actually. I was gifted some black and white spell candles for my birthday and it just felt right for me. So I like to put on some shamanic drumming or singing bowl playlists or some witchy music. And one that I really do love is Peter Gundry. I think the playlist is called The White Witch. I like to keep the lights low these autumn days are great as the mornings are quite dark anyway and the summer for my morning rituals felt totally different so throughout the year with the coming seasons everything does feel different in your morning rituals anyway and it's quite a nice way to observe and mark the seasons if that makes sense so once I've lit my candles I sit cross-legged in front of my altar If I'm really prepared that morning, I love to chant the following words that I picked up from Naja Lightfoot's book, Good Juju. And I say these before I start my grounding or like my meditation. So the words are, as above, so below, the magic is with me wherever I go. What I do and what I say blesses and guides me along my way. The way is good and the way is right. May magic and juju be with me day and night. By the power of three times three, blessed be and so mote it be. 
So you might wish to change the words or create your own morning meditation spell along these lines. So once I've uttered those words, I will then concentrate on meditating. So for me, I close my eyes, I focus my mind, and I like to see in my mind's eye a blue flame and focus on the flame itself. So it takes me quite a while to get into a meditative state. But once I feel I am grounded and have meditated for as long as I can cope with lol, which isn't usually that long, I'd say about five, 10 minutes at an absolute max. I then enter into daily devotion with my goddesses. So this is one of my most important parts of my practice. It really is. I know not everyone works with a deity, so this might be completely irrelevant for you. You may just wish to take this time to sit with yourself and maybe have a conversation with yourself in your mind about, you know, where you're at to utter some words of reassurance to yourself. But for me, I work with Hecate and the Morrigan. So in terms of my practice, I've always been very cautious with my deities, but that's me. You might feel totally different with yours. It's just Hecate and the Morrigan especially are dark goddesses, real forces to be reckoned with. So I definitely ask to call upon them carefully. I definitely talk to them about how in awe I am of them also flatter them obviously with their amazing qualities that they have that I would like to harness or just have a little you know tiny crumb of perhaps if I need some help with confidence so perhaps in working with the Morrigan or with Hecate for her to guide me through a stage in my life I try to tie in what I am asking for with their epithets or their qualities that I know they possess So many books and material that I have read advises that the deities, they like to hear this. They like to hear how worshipped and how in awe of them that we are. I always envisage the Morrigan as someone in particular who likes to hear this. So I do talk to them in general about what's going on in my life, not just ask them for things all the time, of course, I have also come across on my journey in the craft that they like to know what's happening with us. So they do want to know what's going on and, you know, for us to talk with them. I cry to them if I need to. I don't know. I just have communion with them daily and it works for me and it has made me feel a lot more connected to working with them. It works for me. It might not be how anyone else does it, but it's something that I have, you know, dedicated I'd say pretty much every morning too. If I don't, I feel like the wheels do fall off of my day. I don't ask for something all the time, but I do light the black candle first to remove that that I no longer wish to have in my life. I light the white candle to bring more in of what I do want on the daily. So that is a regular part of my ritual. So this really is the foundation of my daily practice, if that helps. And There are obviously smatterings of like moon rituals and days where my spell work feels right to do. But this alone gives me some time out to connect with myself and my deities. So at the end of my daily devotion, once I have talked with Hecate and the Morrigan, I always ask them if there is anything that I feel I should know or do, because sometimes I feel that there are certain things that they ask of me. I leave a space of silence and I have a lot of things that usually come up in that time. I have had many huge ideas and nudges, especially creatively and in regards to the work that I do, come up during my morning ritual. Once I finish with my daily devotion, I brew up that coffee and I write a gratitude list. This is huge for me because I think with my mental state, I used to look at the negative a lot and I used to over worry. So the gratitude list for me has changed everything. I do that on the daily without fail now. That's become a huge part of my practice. 
And then I go on to write three pages called morning pages within my diary. So this is a space of writing about anything that I need to do, anything that's making me anxious, anything that I need to get out to stop it from worrying me. But also I go into any dreams or plans that I might be concocting. This has hugely helped me with anxiety and getting this out is a real cathartic process. It is a massive therapy for me. This came from the book The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron and has been part of my practice for a very long time now. I have traditionally not been an organized person nor a routine person. I haven't been good with forms of regularity. I like life to be spontaneous and varied. However, if I have ever had times when I have stopped with these rituals, something often goes wrong for me. So I have realized that this does keep me on track. I also realize how much better equipped I feel dealing with things since this has been part of my practice. So I thought I were going to more on grounding today and more on how you can do it. So if you suffer or experience anxiety or you, like myself, get too hyper, this can really help to level you out. So there's been a lot of talk about mental health recently. And I think with the pandemic and the lockdown, there has been a lot more awareness of how people's mental health is So I've never mentioned this on the show, but I'm going to mention it just because of the way that it's been used as part of my treatment, if that makes sense. So I have BPD or EID, so that's borderline personality disorder, but I know now mainly it's called emotional intensity disorder. So Oh, it's like I'm letting it all out today, but I don't know. I just feel like sometimes you have to be honest about what you have going on. So someone else out there might realize it's not just them that has the same. It's obviously a kind of shared experience. So hopefully it, you know, might help someone else and make them realize that they're not on their own with it. So with BPD or EID, however you prefer to refer to it, it means you can experience emotions very intensely. So if you are happy, you can literally go off into the stratosphere with that. And if you are down, it's really extreme. I don't treat my BPD with medication, but that's because I had such bad experiences with it. It's like I was fine with illegal drugs, but no, if you're going to give me the prescribed stuff, my body doesn't like it. Anyway, I had to look at different ways of treating it myself, which I've done through counselling sessions. I've also worked with an amazing herbalist when my BPD was at its worst. So one of my naive views at the time was, could a herbalist actually provide me with something that could be strong enough to make me feel better and level me out that is made from plants? But my druggy head at the time decided that if they can make cocaine, alcohol and heroin from plants, then let me give it a go. I kid you not, that was my reasoning when I decided to go. The herbalist that I have worked with before, she is a witch. She's amazing. She has one brown eye, one green eye. I think I've got that right. And an apothecary with floor to ceiling glass witchy bottles. And I'd sit in her apothecary, usually crying, telling her what was going on at the worst points of my mental health. And she would be there opening all the little jars up and filling one up for me to take away and making me up some teas and so on. And she'd fill me in on the plants that were in there. But it was such an amazing experience. And it healed me in ways that the counselling couldn't. It levelled me out a lot. So if ever you have disregarded working with a herbalist or you just don't, if you're just sceptical, honestly, it was such a change for me in my mental state. And she is someone I know that I can go to if ever things get really bad. So it's definitely, definitely worth if you've ever discarded working with a herbalist or anything, I can't recommend it enough. So grounding is a real pillar of the work that comes up within a lot of mental health treatment. 
but also for witches overall, as it's working with energy and learning how to balance and equalize the energy flow. If you are ungrounded, you can be all over the place. So a bit like how I am on today's podcast. So scattered, unfocused, moody, on edge, distracted, unable to connect, or you feel disconnected. If you are well grounded, you will find that you are settled, focused in mind and body. It's easier for some people to ground themselves than it can be others. But overall, if you are able to work on grounding, it can really support your practice. So grounding is the process of connecting with our physical body and the earth. As a daily meditative practice, it can support you both mentally, physically and emotionally. The reason to highlight having BPD and then going into grounding is that with BPD, EID and for many mental health problems, we can spend a lot of time in fight or flight mode. So our body is preparing us to run away or to have a fight. So by using grounding practices, you can counteract this and calm and reconnect your body and mind. So grounding for magic, so before our spell work, can help us focus and reduce internal distractions, but also connect with ourselves. So you might even opt to ground again following your spell work or rituals to return you to a calm state. Sometimes after any magic work we do, we can feel spaced out or mentally or physically tired. So grounding after is said to bring you back to the real world. I will admit this isn't something I currently do once I finish up closing my circle, but something I feel I will work on going forward. So grounding goddess that you may wish to consider working with is Bamba, hope I've said that right, a Celtic goddess. She is the generous earth mother like other well-known goddesses like Gaia, Pachamama and Terra terrible pronunciation again. She's also a goddess of shelter and stone circles. You might wish to connect with her for a blessing of security and grounding. So I've got some ways that you might wish to ground using the elements. So firstly, with water, simply having a good old bath, one of my favourites. If you're feeling really brave, you may wish to sit yourself in a body of water, for example, the sea or a river. Feel where the water touches your skin and the surface line around you and envisage weightlessness. I love doing that when I'm in the sea. Now, wild swimming and being in water in nature has great impact on your mental health. My brother and sister-in-law, they swim all throughout the year, even in the depths of winter. And I definitely think that they are on something. So you could listen to the rain, the waves, a running river, feel the sound and let it vibrate through you until your vibrations match. If you can't recreate this naturally, you may want to listen to a rain or waves playlist on Spotify or on YouTube. So working with the element of air, you could breathe in for four counts and breathe out for 12. So my counselor taught me this and it's great as you fully expand your lungs and you get all of that old air out of them. I do this whenever I find myself panicking or shallow breathing. A really simple one, get out for a walk, feel the wind on your face, allow the wind to carry away your unnecessary stresses. And lastly for air, chant or sing some calming meditations. I like to use chants in my spell work because it raises the energy up to a speed, but you could use affirmations and slow it down to calm and reassure yourself at the same time. So Pinterest is brilliant to locate affirmations to use, or you might wish to create bespoke ones that mean something to you. And lastly, with the element of fire, You can simply turn out the lights, light a candle and watch its light flicker onto the walls, which is great for these darker months. Or if you have a real fire, you could simply sit gazing into it. And the other one that I mentioned at the 
beginning of the show, when I do my morning ritual, I sit in a meditative state and visualize in my mind's eye a candle with a blue flame. So some other ways to practice grounding, you've got physical techniques, so you could count your heartbeat, again, using breathing techniques, taking a short walk, or moving in rhythm, perhaps some dancing or yoga. So mental techniques, you could have an internal dialogue, count in a random order, you could label your surroundings, anchor yourself with a phrase, soothing techniques, so sensory soothing, so listening, touching, smelling, tasting, you could practice love and kindness, write a gratitude list, sing or hum your favorite song. So a simple grounding technique you could perform anywhere. This is a simple grounding technique for when you're feeling out of balance and it just takes a few seconds. So all you need to do is close your eyes and imagine your bare feet walking in the grass. You may want to visualize tree roots under the ground also. So open your crown chakra, which is the the top of your head, and envisage a white light coming out the top and circling around your body. So this is your protection bubble. Visualize yourself inside it, you're safe and protected. This only takes a minute or so and you can use it when you are out and about and need a quick burst of protection and grounding. And some words that you may wish to say for grounding. So I am grounded, my spirit is grounded deep in the earth, I am calm, strong, centered, and peaceful. I am able to let go of fear and trust that I am eternally safe. I am worthy of all things beautiful. And that came from Carly Marie on at soulvoice underscore IG on Instagram. So grounding is an energy thing. So it brings your energy back into the physical realm. So the body, an energy thing, what a technical term. Earthing is a physical thing. So just putting your bare feet or your naked skin against the earth. So electrical fields mess with our natural fields. So grounding can really help with this. Everything has an electrical field and earthing basically recharges our bodies. So when you sit by a body of water, it makes us feel good as it emits negative ions that are beneficial as they help us release cortisol, reduce inflammation and increase blood flow. So in order to earth, all you need to do is take off your shoes and put your feet on the ground. So if you have the opportunity to do this, for 45 minutes to two hours a day, this is said to really fully benefit you. Although I'll be honest, the only time I really get to do this is in the spring, summer months. If you live in the UK, you know. So any skin contact through like the ground for a period of time can help with grounding. I don't think you need to specifically do it for that amount of time. I think anything that you can do will always help. So some of the information that I took for today's show comes from the amazing book, Yoga for Witches, written by Sarah Robinson. So this is the closing thoughts section on the grounding chapter. For me in my yoga meditations, I often talk about letting everything beyond our bodies fall away out of our awareness so that all we are left with are the roots of who we are body, mind, heart and breath. If I could say just one thing about the specialness of connecting to the earth, it would be to remember that the earth will support you. You already have everything you need, grounds beneath your feet, air in your lungs, blood pumping around your body and fire of heart and mind alive. And although having these things doesn't mean you won't come across struggle, grief, anger and pain, it's always useful to remember that we are strong enough to deal with whatever comes our way. As long as the earth endures, so shall we. Oh, it makes me feel a bit emotional. Um, That's the end of today's episode. I just want to say thank you all so much 
the podcast had over 10k listens over the last months and that's that's just insane so yeah 10k listens in one month that's ridiculous but I'm so bloody grateful so thank you so much to everyone thank you all so much for listening it's blown my mind again Thank you all so much for all your lovely emails, reviews and support over the last year. It's been absolutely wild. If you want to get in touch, come on over to www.thewhitewitchcompany.co.uk. All of my socials are on there. You can sign up for any updates for the newsletter, the Literary Witches Coven. The newsletter is late this month because it's going to be a Samhain special. And then we will go back to it being at the same time each month. Anyway, that is all from me. Lots of witchy love. I will catch up with you all soon.